But there's one item that museum curator Dag Spicer believes captures the more mischievous side of this ever-advancing industry. This box is about five inches by three inches by two inches, and it has keys on the front of it. Attached to this artifact is a small speaker. This innocuous looking box played a devious part in one of the greatest technological advances of all time. This little device let its user control one of the biggest technical systems mankind has ever created. Who designed this device? And what multi-billion dollar company did it inspire? 1957, Richmond, Virginia. Joe Ingressia is a blind eight-year-old boy. He's exceptionally bright and completely obsessed with one thing, the telephone. He was pretty isolated being blind, and uh, the telephone was a, a lifeline, and it was his link to the outside world. But he is most captivated by the subtle sounds that come through his receiver. The phone system is controlled by a network of computers, which communicate through a series of tones. One of the things Joe did was he listened very, very closely to the various sounds that the phone line made during the progress of this call. One day, while making a long-distance call, Joe casually whistles one of those tones back into his phone. And suddenly, his line disconnects. The curious boy makes another call. He whistles the same tone. And once again, the line goes dead. Joe had perfect pitch and... One thing he could do by whistling was to generate extremely precise notes. In fact, the notes that were the language of the telephone system. While the line seems dead, Joe experiments with various patterns of the tone and makes a critical discovery. By whistling a particular sequence, he can make long distance calls almost anywhere. He later comes to learn his parents are never charged for the calls. With these discoveries, Joe's realized that he's hacked the world's largest computer, the telephone system. 11 years later, in 1968, a 19-year-old Joe Ingressia is studying mathematics at the University of South Florida. He quickly acquires a reputation for being this pretty unusual guy who could make free telephone calls around the world. For a dollar a call, Joe offers his unique services to fellow students. But when the university gets wind of Ingressia's operation, it is quickly shut down and he is placed on academic probation. Little does he know that his childhood prank will inspire a technological leap that will change the world forever. But what no one knows is that Ingressia's prank is about to inspire a technological revolution. Joe's case makes headlines, and the public is gripped by the tale of the young man who can manipulate a massive computer with ease. One man fascinated by the idea is John Draper, a 26-year-old former Air Force electronics technician. And he is compelled to take this concept one step further. John Draper sought to automate what Joe was doing with his whistles. Using electronic circuits, a keypad, a battery, and speaker. Draper constructs a small portable device that can be used by anyone to make free calls. While it is sometimes unreliable, word of this new gadget spreads quickly among electronics hobbyists who dub the device a blue box. And suddenly, a new subculture is born. The group of people are called phone freakers. The freaker could refer to either freak as in their freaky people, or it could stand for frequency, which was a key concept in manipulating the telephone system. By 1971, two college dropouts hear about Draper's box and smell a lucrative business opportunity. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, two high school friends from Northern California. They aim to take the device one step further by replacing the unreliable analog components with more precise and superior digital circuits. Digital approach was more accurate and used less power. They sell the devices, like this one on display at the Computer History Museum, for $170 a pop, and the money starts rolling in. The end result was that Wozniak and, and selling them to mainly students in their dorms at uh, UC Berkeley. Emboldened by the success of their partnership, in 1976, the two Steves launch Apple, 
a major milestone in the advancement of the personal computer. And Jobs has often said, without the blue boxes, there would never have been an Apple computer. By the 1980s, most phone companies make the switch to a digital system, and the blue box becomes an outdated piece of technology. Today, this remarkable device sits on display at the Computer History Museum, a reminder of how an eight-year-old boy hacked the largest network of processors in the world and helped usher in the computer age.